Welcome to The Fix List, a guide to improving your paintings by looking at other work in search of common visual problems. Today's problem is clear shapes. And whether we're talking about the design itself or the elements in your composition, the goal here is to have an image that you look at and you can tell objects from other objects. You just want to be able to tell what's going on. So let's look at some examples from the control paint community. This is a good one because I think the design itself is very clear. I can understand all the details in his costume. His shape has nice clean edges. In a lot of ways, it is clear. The problem though, is this pose. Because the way his legs are intersecting and because there's not a lot of shadow detail here, in a way, it looks like he has one leg. Especially if I were to zoom way out, he sort of has a thicker area that goes down to a thinner area, but there's just really no break between the two. There's no negative space to tell the brain leg one and leg two. This is a pretty easy fix. One option is to just change how far it is through the walk such that you have a little more overlap and there's a little bit of negative space. It doesn't take a whole lot for the brain to be able to separate out one leg from the other leg. Clearly, I didn't use reference here and I didn't do a very massive paint over. It still looks a little bit awkward. And frankly, I think walking poses are really challenging. If you are gonna use a walking pose, I encourage you to look at good reference and to take your time with the balance. Otherwise, your character could come off looking a little stiff. And with that in mind, the other option I have here is just to not do a walking pose. He definitely looks a little stiff here, but that's because I didn't do really much rework at all. I just wanted to show that when seen from far away, you can tell he has two legs here. It's not so obvious here. So an otherwise clear design with a very clear shape is made less clear just because of a pose. This right here is a similar option. Now in this case, there's no overlapping problem. We can see all four legs just fine. The problem comes in terms of value. If I zoom way out, you can see his chest very easily because it's a high value skin tone against a black background. Easy to see. You almost can't see the legs at all at this distance. When I zoom back in, you know they're there. But an important part of that initial read is value. And so in order to make these legs more visible, there needs to be higher contrast. Either the background needs to be a different value or the legs themselves need to be a different value. So I've actually done both just to show you what it could look like. The easier option is just to change the design of the legs. In this case, just lighten up the legs a little bit. Now they're much more visible. I can zoom out and I can see them very well. The problem with this is I might've liked the dark legs for other reasons, other reasons based in the actual context this character is going to exist. You know, if it's in a video game or a TV show, it could be that having dark legs and a light top was important. And what I've just done is I've changed that relationship simply so this illustration will work better. That's not always the right thing to do. Which brings me to the other option, which is to leave the design intact. So we go back to the original design and then to change the backdrop just to provide higher contrast so he reads a little better. And this is what I've decided on. The tricky thing with making a background is you have to consider surrounding shapes. So in this case, I knew I needed a specific value behind the legs and a different value behind the skin. I also had this extra tricky element, which was the head of the loot. Because if I didn't have the head of the loot, which is a dark object, I could have actually gone with a much darker sky. The only reason I put the clouds in really is because I, if I had a purely darker sky, like a vibrant blue sky, the head of the loot was getting lost. So you're playing this sort of value puzzle, placing elements that you know are going to provide the necessary contrast. Now, neither of these is the correct option. I just wanted to show the before, which is a little hard to read the legs. And here's another option. And here's another option all of which have a little more contrast and lead to a little bit clearer shapes. This image has a lot of really interesting details almost to its detriment. There's so much stuff going on and so much contrast at small scale that it just feels a bit cluttered. And at a quick glance, there are not very clear shapes. My approach in this paint over was first to simplify the staging a bit. 
to reduce a few of the design elements and to kind of streamline objects. And then also to change the values and the colors of the objects to make them stand out from the background. So you can see I went from barrels that were all kind of equally sized and I made one a little bit bigger and they sort of go smaller in scale as they go up in the composition. There's a little more overlap. That helps with shape clarity. I've also reduced the total number of ropes and I've really diminished the contrast in the background. Before, there was a lot of detail in the background at all different values. Here, I've just lowered the contrast in general in the background. And then I've looked at each individual object and considered what its value is, and then picked a background color that would give it the necessary contrast. I also made the hero character bigger. I made it overlap this barrel, and I streamlined the shape a bit just to kind of simplify things. Again, these are fewer details on all the shapes than the original composition had, but in my opinion, it helps make the initial read much clearer. The shapes are simple, so you understand what's going on. Here's before, and here's after. So clearly lighting is a big part of this process, but the combination of restaging the elements, a little bit of relighting, and simplifying edges can help make it a lot clearer. And here we've got a combination of two of those familiar problems. One is that the values don't provide enough contrast. So I can't really tell the character from the background because there's not quite enough contrast. Additionally, especially when I zoom out, the dragon and the guy are lined up in such a way, it's almost like we have one character here, it's a bipedal dragon, instead of two characters, which is what the artist intended. So we need to separate foreground and background and make the shapes clearer to read. Here's what my paint over looked like. And what I did was to enlarge the foreground character. You can see he was smaller previously. So he's bigger now. He is darker values. I lowered his overall values. And then I used the fire of the dragon to create a lighter value sort of light zone. In doing so, I've separated foreground from background, both through shape and through color. I've also streamlined the design of the dragon itself. There are sort of fewer details around the silhouette. Same goes for the hero. And when we look before, there were just more details in general. I've simplified and clarified with these big simple shapes. Because sometimes you have to remove detail in order to tell your story more clearly. Before, after. And let's finish off with one of my older paintings. This here is a dragon that has some good things going for it, but definitely down here in the bottom, there is a flattening of space. If you squint at this, it's really hard to tell where one arm ends and the body begins or the other arm overlaps. They're essentially all the same value. My task was to add some clarity or some clear shapes in this jumble of limbs. The result I came up with was this. Now, I might later go back and add more small, low contrast details. It's sort of simplified in terms of its surface, but you can see I've looked at where do objects overlap and how can I change one of the values. Here's before, the neck and the arm are the exact same value. So I brightened one and darkened the other, and now we can obviously tell where one starts and the other one ends. Same is true for this arm, and then the tail is kind of behind all of these limbs, so I changed its values a little more significantly. Here's before, here's after. So in this case, there were a lot of overlaps, but I wasn't reinforcing those overlaps with a value change. But by just doing a few value changes and leaving most of the image alone, I was able to go from before to after and to really clarify some of those shapes. These are easy changes to make and definitely worth looking into. And I want to thank the brave audience members that sent in their art to help with this project. It's not easy to get your work critiqued, so thanks for the help. See you in the next video.